For statistical graphics to have high information, we traditionally try to envision for the reviewer what the reviewer is going to want to see, and this often results in cluttered graphics. Uh, a case in point is uh, survival curves, such as those estimated by the Kaplan-Meier method, where we try to show um, the cumulative incidence, or one minus that, the survival curve, uh, various standard errors, confidence intervals, uh, cumulative incidence uh, point estimates, and um, numbers at risk, uh, in other words, numbers of subjects still being followed a certain length of time. Um, and the graphs can be quite cluttered, and it's often better to use newer options in interactive and semi-interactive graphics uh, to show uh, initially what we want to focus on, but to allow drilling down for more information. The RMS package in R uh, has implemented several um, functions that allow you to use Plotly graphics. Plotly graphics are based on the JavaScript D3 library and allow for uh, hovering over points and revealing more information as well as selectively displaying different traces on the graph. So this uh, example is um, using the famous Mayo Clinic PBC data set and uh, we're using non-parametric survival function which is uh, defaulting to given as Kaplan-Meier estimates. It's just saving a little bit more information than the surfit function in the survival package but it uses surfit. So follow up in years uh, with a status variable of whether or not there was a uh, event or uh, censoring and then we're stratifying by absent or present uh, symptom of spiders and primary biliary cirrhosis. And then we say surplot P, and the P means to use plotly graphics using the object F, and time increment of 1 is used in forming the x-axis. And then we're going to make special calculations at 5 and 10 years. Uh, where the 5 and 10 are used is if you go down here to the legend, you see cumulative incidence at 5 and 10 years. Uh, so this is the 5-year cumulative incidence if spiders is absent and the 10-year cumulative incidence, same if spiders is present. These are using a simple exponential distribution fit, so may not be exactly uh, good estimates if the distribution is far from exponential. We see some other basic information, how many total events there were in the two strata. Now we start off by seeing uh, survival curves uh, as we usually have with Kaplan-Meier and these are stratified uh, present or absent and you can turn off uh, the actual curves if you wanted to, you really wouldn't want to. Um, but now we see something a bit different which is a more useful confidence band. So instead of showing uh, the individual confidence bands which we can always see by turning them on by clicking on the, the legend see those confidence bands make the chart quite noisy even if we turn off the difference bands um, and and most non-statisticians don't realize that you cannot look at overlap of individual confidence bands to judge significance of the difference uh, but you have to actually calculate the confidence interval for the difference uh, so we see a lot of noise there it's not really giving us what we really want uh, so we're going to turn off um, those confidence bands, we're going to turn this one back on. Uh, this uh, height here is half of the height of the point-wise 0.95 confidence intervals, and it's positioned at the midpoint of the two Kaplan-Meier estimates. So this has the property that the shaded band overlaps the two curves at a point uh, if and only if the um, p-value for the comparison at those two points is greater than 0.05. So this confidence band, which is the half height uh, confidence band, gives us really what we want and is far less cluttered. Um, so um, when you hover over points on a Plotly graphic, you can see uh, the actual estimates. Um, and now we have something kind of new, which is showing the number of subjects at risk. And so if you think about number at risk, that's really a continuous variable is because time is almost always continuous in survival analysis. 
And so we've been calculating the number at risk on a monthly or yearly basis for most of our statistical lives, and that's really committing uh, a sin, uh, which is chopping nice continuous data. And the reviewer of the graph may want to know the number at risk at a certain point that you didn't happen to choose in making the graph. So now we have all the numbers at risk that we could ever want by just hovering over the point and revealing the number at risk exactly at that time point. You also reveal the uh, survival probability estimate, the Kaplan-Meier estimate. Here you see is 0.611 at 8.679 years and the number of subjects still at risk in that group, which is the spiders absent group. Um, you see the color, color coding of that is the same as the color coding in the legend. Number at risk is 44. Uh, so you can see what you need, and then if you if you hover over a place where the curve is flat for a while, uh, because there were um, no failure times very close together, you see in parentheses also for t equals 10. So our estimate of the survival curve at this point, which is at 9.886 years, is 0.517, and the 30 at risk, but that's also the estimate at uh, exactly 10 years. So it's using the next round number to give you another estimate if the curve carries forward flat because of no other failures in that interval, you can still read off the whole numbers that you need.